make sure my audio is working. Yeah, it is. Look at that. And I have no camera because my uh, scene switcher is uh, switching scenes on me unlike I would like to. There we go. All right, welcome to the bench uh, on this beautiful Monday morning. Uh, it is a beautiful Monday, and you are loved, uh, regardless of what you think or what people show or how they uh, speak to you or interact with you. You are loved. Something I have said for a long time. I hope everybody's doing well today. Thank you for uh, being here, and thank you for your support of my channel. This is all about education and real education, music creation, uh, and most importantly, working on instruments. Um, <clears throat> hey, Hat. Hey, thanks for the call the other night, man. I appreciate that. Uh, it was great to hear. Uh, from uh, Mr. Gary, I appreciate you looking out for me, man. Uh, I'm doing just fine. Uh, just working away. Um, today, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to install some flat wound strings on this acoustic guitar and get it cleaned up. It'll be a lot of uh, rep repetitious uh, stuff that you see on a lot of channels. Um, but I will be installing some flat wound strings on this guitar. Uh, which will come a little later on in the uh, in the program and uh, you know if you want to hear what an acoustic guitar sounds like this is not one of the world's greatest acoustic guitars but it is an instrument that is going to give somebody some uh, joy and some uh, fulfillment with getting to hear it play again. The gentleman who owns this guitar has been waiting for quite some time uh, because I have been so terribly busy with repair work. Uh, a lot of working musicians have been bringing instruments to me um, and contacting me by a phone uh, at home on my days off uh, to help uh, with uh, problems that they're having with instruments and things like that and uh, I always make myself available I say that I work 24 7 365 and that's pretty true um, so uh, what you're watching me do right now is just uh, I'm using some 1500 grit uh, sandpaper um, to clean the frets and get them nice and shiny uh, bring them back to life and we'll give it a flyby here so you can see what they look like after they've been polished and before they've been polished let me shed some more light on this um, so uh, here it is and this is a uh, Fender GG6 it is again not a very expensive guitar it's been cracked right here and somebody glued that uh, and did a pretty poor job but hey uh, it's pretty solid. It's not broken anymore, and you know I'm putting a little pressure on it uh, to check it. Uh, another thing that's happened is the uh, nut fell off the moment I pulled the strings off of this. The strings that were on it were probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 years old, is my guess. Uh, I can't say. And today I'll be using these uh, Magma flat wounds on an acoustic guitar. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so you get an idea of what an acoustic guitar uh, can sound like uh, with some flat wound strings on it. Uh, so um, we'll get to that uh, momentarily. I'm probably going to spend about, uh, I'm hoping to have the cleaning part of this project done uh, in about 15 minutes. Um, you know, and I, I realize that this is stuff that you see on you know, people like Dave's World of Fun stuff, and bless him for sharing such great information with the world on fixing guitars. Um, I consider him a comrade and a uh, brother in arms when it comes to bringing instruments back to life that are potentially destroyed if somebody that didn't know any better uh, didn't have it in their hands, uh, or somebody that didn't know any better did have it in their hands, and 
we either threw it away or destroyed it by trying to fix something they weren't really uh, you know, necessarily qualified to fix. Um, a lot of this stuff you all can do on your own. Um, what you're seeing me do here is something that uh, is, uh, I think, important uh, for the playability of an instrument like this. Um, and again, I'm doing a really super quick um, cleanup on this instrument simply due to the fact that the gentleman who owns this guitar doesn't have a huge budget. And uh, he wants it done quickly and he wants it uh, back in uh, good working order. Oh boy, did I lose? Oh, no, I didn't. Here's the nut. Um, Got to make sure not to lose that. Put it in my little box of tricks down there. Uh, screws and extra spare parts. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Hopefully you all can hear me. Yeah, you can. Um, hi, Zach. Uh, my knees hurt. Hello, Preston. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, yeah. Guitar shocker. Yeah. Thanks for saying hello, guitar shocker. Yeah, yeah. Great to see everybody. Preston, I still have not opened your gift. I'm kind of waiting until Christmas. Uh, I'm not expecting to get a bunch, so it'd be fun to have a, a, a gift to open. Uh, Preston, I appreciate you doing that for me. And, you know, while I do know uh, or have a very good idea of what's in the box, what's in the box, uh, I, I'm going to wait until Christmas. Um, it's kind of a tough time of year for a lot of us, man. Missing my mom a lot. Uh, missing spending time with my family. Uh, and missing my daughter a lot these days. Hasn't been really, a, I haven't really been having a lot of fun the last couple weeks. So, you know, depression is definitely something that I battle. And uh, you know, what better way than to share some knowledge with folks uh, to beat something like depression. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, those of you watching today might learn something um, about how to take care of an instrument or, uh, you know, put strings on a guitar in the proper way or at least in my way, which I think is a pretty good way to do it. Um, and we're just cleaning the DNA off of this fingerboard right now. And get you over here where you can see the camera guy's drunk again. All right. Got up, took a nice hot long shower this morning. It was really nice. And my good old cat Fred. It was funny. He usually doesn't join me in, in I mean he doesn't get in the shower with me, but he usually doesn't come in the bathroom when I turn on the shower. I, I think he gets uh, worried I might throw them in there which I would never do you should never wash a cat like that to my knowledge but nonetheless he hung out with me this morning slept on the carpet while I was taking a shower it was really cool He's, uh, he is about the only interaction I have with uh, other living creatures um, in the recent years of life um, aside from, you know, the virtual online stuff. Uh, so it's really cool. I don't know, Preston, what do you think about bathing a cat? Like, is that really something? I've heard of people doing it, but they generally take pretty good care of themselves. Look at that neck, just come right back. I'm do again, I'm doing a really quick cleanup on this. Um, cause the gentleman that owns this guitar doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. You can see what's come off of that fingerboard. Pretty gross. Um, but again, this guitar I don't think has been played in a very long time. It only had four strings on it when it arrived at my shop. And, um, let's see, the other thing I've done is repaired one of the machine heads on this thing because it was broken. Um, this thing has really, really, uh, in my humble opinion, very cheaply made uh, machine heads. Um, not a big fan of the design of them. Um, <clears throat> they're installed, obviously, at the factory uh, at Fender in Indonesia, is where this guitar was built. And so again, the, the, the quality uh, is not that great, but to me it doesn't matter. 
Um, if it can have strings on it, I don't care. Um, they can all be made worthy of, of playing. Uh, any questions from anybody about anything uh, on setting up an acoustic guitar? I would love to answer any questions that somebody might have or something specific that you might be dealing with in yours. Um, I know recently Zach had commented that he's got a, a custom guitar or something. Uh, I don't remember the exact details, but I do recall him saying something about a, a custom acoustic, and I'm just curious... Uh, what uh, the status of that is and it sounded like he was going to be uh, releasing some music um, I haven't had to bay the cat in years Alexa, yeah, I hear you I hear you also, this is my crap <laughs> that's awesome Hot 36, that's funny uh, hello you Low and cheap. Play sounds great. Late seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. If there's anything specific um, about uh, an acoustic guitar that anybody might want to know, um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Because there are so many details uh, on these instruments, and this thing is already looking remarkably better. Um. Now, here's something that I do when I'm cleaning them, and that is I do my best to not get um, any of the cleaning chemicals on the pick guards. Um, <clears throat> sometimes um, the chemicals used in cleaners uh, are, <clears throat> they can damage the plastic and make it shrink. Um, I haven't personally had one that has, um, come back to me with somebody saying that because I cleaned their guitar that the pick guard shrunk and it peeled off but I have heard horror stories especially about Martin guitars and the plastics that they use um, that uh, you know you see all you see a lot of guitars uh, where the the pick guard is kind of peeling up in these areas around the edges and such and you know, it's a tragic thing that happens, uh, but sometimes just leaving a guitar in the case for a lot of years, the the the, um, the bindings will uh, emit some uh, gases. Uh, that's why the old green uh, Les Pauls are so notably um, <laughs> documented. Uh, they get that green appearance to them. It's because the gases that come off of the plastics used in the creation of the um, um, Or the materials that are used to make the bindings on these instruments can be pretty volatile um, I watched the movie *Inglorious Bastards last night. It was pretty awesome. I love those kinds of movies um, Not because of the violence, but because of the um, destruction of those who uh, would try to destroy democracies, uh, Hitler being one of them. So, there you go. No politics. There we go. I'm not going to go through and clean this guitar up real immensely. Um, I would under um, many other circumstances, but today this one's not going to get it. I uh, bought a new slope shoulder. 12th fret dreadnought, beautiful looking sound. Oh, you bought a new guitar. Wow, cool. I cannot imagine buying a new guitar right now. Um, mainly because I don't get paid a lot, and the other reason is because I have enough guitars I don't want anymore. <laughs> have you used the Bridge Doctor? Um, let me answer that question real quick. Give me a second. I keep three of these in stock 24-7. Yes, they are um, a great solve uh, for an instrument that, in my humble opinion, has had braces that came undone. I keep these in stock at my shop all the time. Um, they're, uh, let's just say, for instance, a working musician came into my shop 
and have the belly bolts here. Um, and we can take a look at this guitar real quick. I'll break out my uh, device. I use a straight edge like this. Um, you know, fairly cheap uh, straight edge. But this one, this one, if I hold it level over the high spot in the middle of this guitar, has about three sixteenths of an inch on either side between the high spot. So it's got about a three sixteenths inch bulge in the middle. And to me, that's normal. A flat top guitar is not truly flat, um, whatever they say. Uh, let's see. In the new year. Oh, cool, Zach. I look forward to hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bulges in acoustic guitars are very, very common. And, you know, if you're worried about it, um, that tool that I just showed you, and that was a great question. I really appreciate it. Oscar, welcome. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, he sold six. Good grief, Hugh. You got any left, man? <laughs> nice. All right, so we've gotten the neck cleaned up. I've uh, gotten all the DNA off the fingerboard. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and treat it with some... Actually, before I do the linseed oil treatment, I am going to glue the nut back in place. And I'm just going to check it up here. I'll bring you up here where the action's happening. Um, let's see. So, the nut does not fit perfectly on this guitar, so my guess is that this has probably at some point in its life been replaced. Um, so all I'm going to do is just make sure to center that up. Um, I'm going to use some of my favorite glue in the world. Uh, we get, we're able to get these Maxi Cure here in the little town of La Grande um, at our local store called The Hobby Habit. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and scrape the back side of that a little bit, get the old glue off so I can get a nice solid uh, joint. See all that stuff that comes off of there? Um, that can inhibit, and this is a plastic nut, which I am not a fan of. Woohoo! Almost sliced myself. Good thing my razor blade's dull. Got to wash out for my left hand. That's a pretty valuable commodity right there in my world. All right. Petriani, what can we look forward to hearing from you? You got any new stuff coming? <sighs> new music. Hugh just released a new one yesterday, I believe. Maybe Saturday. really cool cool to hear Hugh Hugh's been on a rampage releasing music really cool to see that really proud of him for being so um, involved in the music community again I'm not I, I can't spend a ton of time on this one so I'm kind of doing a bang up uh, quick set up on this this one um, I normally would be going to lunch right now but we're left here short-handed at our shop so I don't want to leave my uh, journeyman here by himself he'd, he'd get totally confused <laughs> and he's probably over there listening to me talk about him right now <laughs> all right so ooh, dang nailed it all right get a little bit of a hit this with some uh, speed up juice oh speed up the drying process i have not heard i haven't spoken with that guy on that martin yet chris oh no problem okay Stu kind of gave me a heads up on what you were thinking on that one so yeah i mean it's still a, it's a super cool guitar but yeah it's not a... you got it i think so i was looking at that I think I love the smell of accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So you're going to use uh, RR and yes. uh, uh, CH1? Do we uh, have one out there? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we got our nut on there. And I do that um, before I, if the nut comes off of the guitar, which a lot of acoustic guitars, the nut will come off of there when you pull the strings off, which is not a bad thing. Um, they do that uh, quite often when I'm working on acoustic guitars. Um, it's just a common thing that happens. And forgive me if you've asked any questions and I haven't been able to answer them, but I'm sure that um, other guys in the chat will be able to answer a question for you. There are a couple of really well-rounded uh, techs and players uh, in there in the chat so I have to I have to keep myself focused here because I'm being paid right now to work on this guitar um, <clears throat> so, uh, to animate a piece of guitar stuckless guitar okay cool hello feisty I didn't think of that. <laughs> it's got to be 300 beats per minute, Hugh, in my uh, vast knowledge of uh, shit that Hetriani sent me to try and play along with. <laughs> yeah, he knows I'm just joking, but he sent me one recently that I could not keep up with. I'm not a real fast player, so tempos at 300 beats per minute are above my uh, pay grade. <laughs> uh, just set a click to 300 beats per minute, Hugh, and see if you can hang with it. Here is a backing track that I do highly recommend, and that is uh, 500 Miles High by Chick Corea. Find a version of that, because if you're studying modes, uh, you can use the Aeolian mode through it, but you have to change keys throughout. So it's a really, really cool... I've asked Rick Romanelli to uh, play it, and he has yet to tackle that one, but... Check out 500 Miles High. It's a jazz riff. Uh, and it, uh, just really uh, beautiful modal thing. It's not something you can just sit there and bang the blues like every other dork in the world does on most of their music. And I, I, I use the word dork very loosely. <laughs> the blues scale being the most abused scale in the history of music. All right. Here it is with a uh, linseed oil on there. Yeah, you have to be modal uh, with uh, a song like 500 Miles High. And it's not, you know, a, a comp super complicated piece of music. But I like that sort of stuff personally because it challenges my, um, my uh, improvisational skills when it comes to changing modes uh, in a song. And I try and write my own music, uh, which I haven't written anything for many, many months. But I try and write my own music with uh, similar uh, challenges. Um, and so now, look at that neck. Look at how much better that looks. Very, very nice now. This thing will, uh, this thing will come along. The fret work on this is actually pretty good. It's got a bound neck. Uh, and the neck has definitely shrunk on this quite a bit. But uh, the frets aren't, they're not cheese graters at this point, so. Not in bad shape. Let's see. Yeah, give it a spin, Hat. Uh, it's written by uh, Chick Corea. Um, I think you really enjoy it, and you'll enjoy the challenge. It's not a fast. It's not a fast tempo. So forgive me if it's too slow for you. But uh, <laughs> let's see. Where am I? Pull the saddle out of here. Working. Oh, and there's a little shim on this side of the, uh, the bridge. I'll show you that. I don't like doing that, but um, the string, I, I couldn't measure the string action on this thing because it only had four strings on it, so it did me no good to, to check the string action, which I'll do after I get all of the clean up and um, get strings back on it. Again, I appreciate y'all being here and enjoying the, uh, hopefully it's entertainment and uh, maybe learn a little bit of something rather than just pushing a button on a keyboard and having a big, great song shit out the other end.
I did not get to catch uh, the interview with Fulcum Bluzer the other day. Um, I was working and uh, just have students of my own. I haven't had time to watch it. Um, so, but I guess uh, he was interviewed on um, Jade, Jade Star's uh, channel. She has a great channel. And at this point in this process, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use my rag that I cleaned the um, linseed oil off, and I'm going to go ahead and wipe down the guitar with linseed oil. And you might watch what happens here. Hopefully the color will uh, do its thing. Um, and you'll see the kind of the color just kind of come back to life in this guitar. A little trick that I learned from a good old boy. I was a little nervous about putting uh, linseed oil on the finish of a guitar, but uh, in reality, linseed oil is what is used on a lot of old cars that have a patina on them that look. They use that to give them a shine, and it keeps the bad stuff out, keeps the good stuff in. And here is the guitar now. A little bit of linseed oil uh, on it. I'm going to go ahead and put a drop right here. Just takes a tiny amount. That's enough to do the whole top of this guitar. And just with that little touch, you can see how the yellow and the color kind of comes back to life. I don't know if my camera is going to... I have a, you know, just a cheap webcam uh, that I use. I got Logitech 920. And again, I'm doing my best to keep any of the oil off of the pick guard. I don't want to get any on there. But it's a little extra touch I can do to help um, the guitar have a little bit better appearance, especially the top of the guitar. I'm not going to do the whole guitar, but in some cases I will uh, when folks um, are uh, wanting a full service, the full meal deal. All right. Uh. Let's see. Oh yeah. The yeah, my knees hurt. I got a button I can push on mine. There's so many apps out there that allow you to push one button and a whole song shits out the other end. It's really funny to me. Uh, flat one version. Okay. My knees hurt. I agree with you 100%. Folk and Bluzer is a great, that guy has put out some really great music, and I'm glad that I uh, I got to hear him and see him uh, play. Uh, that was that was cool. You can see that my rag's kind of hanging up maybe on the, on the fingerboard. Watch what happens here when I, you can see that it's catching on the edges of these frets. And again, <clears throat> the gentleman doesn't want me to clean all that stuff up, so... I'm going to go ahead and leave that. If this was a, uh, I don't know, if somebody was wanting me to do the full Monty again, I would I would probably go along and file off the edges of these frets because they're kind of sharp, but they're not annoying. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Let's put the, uh, where did the saddle go? Anybody see the saddle? What did I do with it? There it is. And the saddle's a little gummed up with DNA, so we'll take a, uh, a razor blade. Um, I'm going to do this right right here so I don't get the guck all over. This tool right here is one of the best for doing this sort of stuff. Just to clean up uh, an instrument. You know, I don't think this guitar has been played in a lot of years, so you can take the time to do stuff like this with your own guitar and it will look a lot nicer to the public eye. Speaking of public eye, I went out on Thursday and played at an open jam here in town. It's the only live music uh, going on around here. Uh, 
which was really fun. Ended up on stage with two dudes I'd never met before. And uh, we, uh, the three of us improvised, came up with a really cool riff and uh, jammed on it for about five minutes. If you do that sort of thing, don't, don't waste people's time. Just play something for five minutes and then move on. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you can get you can bore an audience, which is the last thing you want to do playing music. Although if, you know if you're one of those guys that can play for 15 minutes straight and never lose the attention, oh, that's a better player than I am. Although I'm not that great. I've just been playing a long time. And sometimes it brings me great joy, and sometimes it brings me a lot of frustration. All right, so this is a set of um, 11 to 52 gauge strings. So it's an 11, 15, 23, 32, 42, and then 52. Uh, so we'll go ahead and throw these on here real quick. Stringing up a guitar. Boy! I think they bagged these up enough, didn't they? They, they use enough bags on these uh, strings. Wow, check these out. And I, I have to be honest and say that I believe this is the first set of flat wound strings I have ever put on an acoustic instrument. Um, I believe it is. Let me, uh, let me reverse the order <laughs> of these so I don't fuck it up. All right, and the original um, end pens. Here we go. We'll see how these, uh, oh, and the end pens are not ground off. Angle these off. You know, if you own an acoustic guitar and your um, pens aren't angled like that, be sure next time you change strings to sand those off at an angle. It'll help the string from getting hung up. Down there. Oh, let's see. Yeah. These are flat wounds made by, uh, they're, they're called Magma Professional Series. Um, I wasn't looking for a specific manufacturer of strings uh, on these ones. It's going to take me a little bit longer to get these strings on here because I'm, I'm uh, each one of these end pins, I'm going to go ahead and sand down uh, so that there's an angle on the end of them. So forgive me for not setting a land speed record on stringing this bad boy up. Check these out. Um, I have never played an acoustic guitar with flat wounds on it, so this will be a first also. I've strung up a lot of electric guitars with flat wounds, typically guys that play jazz. Um, and what's interesting is uh, a lot of rockabilly players, uh, especially bass players, love using flat wounds. Uh, it's a very uh, popular style of music in my area. We don't have a lot of metal heads here. I mean, there's a few for sure, um, but they're few and far between, and they hardly ever play. Uh, so, we do have a lot of rockabilly going on uh, around our local area here. And I do string up basses with uh, flat wounds quite often. Uh, yeah. Um, Tango. Made in Argentina? Well, sure enough. That's cool. Never been there. <laughs> of course, I've never hardly ever been anywhere. <laughs> ah. It's interesting because uh, these are made in Argentina and they're one of the most inexpensive uh, flat wound acoustic strings I could find. Okay, so they, the, the flat wound strings, the wound strings were packaged in a plastic container like this, 
have this plastic around them and the unwound strings are like a normal set of Ernie Balls or Diodarios where they're not wound in plastic so they must uh, the materials that they're made out of they must want to protect that for some reason they are wound up very nicely there we go always want to be careful when you're unwinding a string not to uh, give it a good tug because you'll uh, potentially kink the string causing a weak spot in it and I almost guarantee you if you do that it will break right there eventually that will be the break point one more and again I'm not making any land speed record stringing this thing up but usually I can do it pretty quick yeah you don't want to just grab the string and start pulling on it uh, that's a bad idea some strings will do that but I think let's see Hey, thanks, Hat. Thanks for being here today. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, you know, y'all know better than to do that, but uh, it's really a good idea to unwind them nice and neatly. All right. All right. So we're about ready to wind these bad boys up and hear what they sound like. Let's go up to the business end of things up here. And get my camera set up. And uh, here we go. So again, I re-glued the, uh, the nut down. Go ahead and put these bad boys on. And I don't know what this is going to sound like. I'm guessing it's probably going to have a duller uh, sound, you know, not so bright and tingly as a uh, round wound. Uh, you see what I see here? It's not winding. All right, let's take a look and see what's happening here. Um, one thing I've already done on this is I replaced this machine head. And again, I, I think I stated earlier that these machine heads are really cheap and not well built. Uh, so uh, again, Fender generally uses pretty shoddy parts on their affordable uh, acoustic instruments. Uh, so let's see what's going on with this one. And if you wonder why it gets expensive when you have a luthier work on your instruments, you're witnessing why. Uh, that's why I don't give anybody an exact price ever. It's always an estimate because, yeah, it'll cost you 30 bucks to put a set of strings on your guitar for you. And then you got to find something like this that needs to be... Oh... And that spindle is broken. Um, so I am going to, and here's another reason uh, I do not ever cut the strings off because inevitably you're going to have to pull the strings off of the instrument. And here is a perfect example of why I don't uh, cut the string off before I'm done uh, I'm done with it um, now here is the uh, machine head that's broken uh, give me one moment I'm gonna go check with my journeyman real quick because I think we have one more of these uh, these machine heads are real interesting they've got this little keeper clip that goes underneath the um, the gear right here and if you lose that part your machine head is completely utterly done um, so let me go check with my uh, journeyman Stu real quick and see if he's got another one of those
Yeah, so we don't we don't throw anything away uh, at all here at the shop. Uh, so uh, and Stu, um, not that we're hoarders or anything. Again, thank you all for being here. Uh, let me get a uh, uh, roll call. Let's see. Let me see. Dave, how what's up? Hugh, my knees hurt. Oscar, hello. Zach, Preston, hello. And look at that, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, do you want to you want to take this with you? Let's see what we got here. So this gear That's here got, is got teeth off of it. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping no more of these have that going on. I might need to replace all the machine heads on it if that's the case. Well, I'll look and see them. what I have that's similar. Okay. It may not be... Um, you didn't give me the other one that you had the other day. No, I had one that was a diff little different, but um, let me see what I can find for you. I don't think I, that bucket of parts is out. In the... Right, but I'm going to have to dig through there and find... I, you might end up with something similar, but a little different. The main thing is this gear. Yeah. Uh, do you, what kind of splines on it? Yeah. Well, we can pull the. I can go, do it on the shop. I'll be right back. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna take the phone with me. I'll be right back. Later. Okay. Cool. So, um, my uh, journeyman is out looking for uh, tuners. Yeah. I rarely do ever either. Mm, shower. Yeah. It, um, yeah, machine head issues are, are really rare. Um, that type of problem is very rare. Um, so the fact that, that the gears and the, the brass gears were literally broken, the teeth were broken off of that gear, which is rare that I see something like that. But those specific tuners, um, it's a very specific size, and the way that they mount is very specific. So. I've already replaced one of those on this instrument, so my hope is that I'm not going to find other ones that are busted. If I do, it's going to mean likely swapping out all the machine heads on this, in which case I'll have to call the gentleman and find out if he wants to do that. Uh, well. Built-in failure is something that guitar manufacturers have been doing since about 1952 when they built the first Les Paul. Need I say more? Uh, yeah, this is probably, I'm guessing that when this guitar was built, it's a Fender DG6 is the model number. You can Google it and see what they're selling for. They may even still make this model. I don't know. They probably call it a DG8 or something by now. Uh, <laughs> good old days. Uh, oh, you have a short scale. I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I didn't know one of your... Because I usually see you playing that five-string um, on your Wednesday show. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm going to hold off on putting any more strings on this until I know that I've got that machine head um, problem resolved. Um, yeah, trying to think of other built-in failure. Uh, well, memory cards and iPhones. There's another built-in failure, but Gary's not here, so I can't get too dig dig too deep into that. Um, Schaller M6. I'm not familiar with that particular machine head. Um, I'm trying to think. I call them Schallers. Um, okay. Okay, that's what's up. I wasn't sure, Preston. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to hold off on doing anything more on this one until I know I can get that machine head repaired. Uh, is there something else I could do? What else can I do to stay busy? What else? What else? Here I am in a holding pattern. <laughs> I don't want to go ahead and put strings on it and then have to swap out all the machine heads. That wouldn't be too wise. 
Normally I'd be eating lunch right now, but I'm not really very hungry today. Uh. <laughs> Planned obsolescence. Welcome to Windows. Yeah. Boy, that's a, there's a lot of that going on in our world. The planned obsolescence. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, he'll be back in just a moment. Um, Stu uh, is, uh, I, I call him my journeyman. He's been working on guitars for close to 50 years. He's built many acoustic guitars and banjos, mandolins. Um, he knows far more about this than um, I think I will ever do. I'll die not knowing nearly as much as he does. So, um, you know, yeah. And and all of those years of repairing and working on instruments, guitars, he was the main guitar repair tech here at our shop. And uh, I kind of took over uh, for him when I noticed that there were a lot of guitars getting built up here at our shop and they were unaware that I was uh, capable of doing that stuff so I went from being a salesman to being a repair tech like that um, not at this point Preston to answer that question uh, no uh, the rest of them I believe work and we'll find that out but again I don't want to waste my time putting strings on the other machine heads uh, if I do end up having to replace uh, the low E, I definitely have a replacement machine head I can put on here, but it won't match. So I'm doing my best to match it up uh, with the other ones. So yeah, uh, my journeyman's name is Stu, and he is, I'll put him up against anybody. John Bolin, name a guitar builder. Um, yeah. Manda Banjo. Grover Manda Romantics. Oh, yeah, okay. Goto 510s. Yeah, I am a huge Goto fan. Uh, those guys don't build too many shitty uh, machine heads. These ones are obviously built, made out of really crappy metal, probably. Uh, the part that broke is brass. And I have no idea what uh, kind of torture it was put through to cause it to break like that. It's really difficult to break a gear like that. Uh, you take some force. Uh, so typically before the gear breaks, uh, the string will break in almost every case. Um, Yeah, that's a great uh, that's a great idea, my knees hurt. In fact, I'm going to use that, and I appreciate you saying that. You're one of the first people who's ever given me uh, a piece of advice that I can use to uh, test something. What I'm going to use is my little ice pick, um, and we'll put this in here, and we'll check. Here's your destroyed gear. All Here's right. your brand new gear. Look at that. Turn that. See if that's smooth enough for you. Yeah, that ought to work. All right, there we go. Stu, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. That's Stu. <laughs> okay, so we've got the, um, you guys saw the busted gear, and because Stu is such a uh, hoarder <laughs> of all things uh, guitar oriented we now have that all right so we're gonna go ahead and put this machine head back in there that was a great bit of advice there uh, and I really appreciate that man it's seldom that somebody will throw something like that I didn't even that didn't even occur to me thinking outside the box like that so we'll go ahead 
and just assume that all of them work. But before I do that, Oscar, I'm going to use your advice and check all of them real quick. And the, the problem with that is that uh, it won't really tell me because of the, because of the 360 degree turn. Yeah, I guess I can um, I can check them in a full 360 degree uh, spin. And I am going to use a uh, little Allen key for doing that, or hex key, as it were. Here we go. Where is it? Where are you? There you are. What a great, what a great piece of advice, bro. Come on. Can't find a hole. Hopefully, hopefully my cameraman's pointing the camera in the right direction. That one's in good, good working order. And this one, we'll check them all before I waste any more time. And I'm putting a little bit of back pressure on that to make sure that they work. I know this one works because I repaired it the other day. But we'll go ahead and just for the sake of argument. I'm putting again a little bit of back pressure on it to make sure that it's biting all the way around. Also being careful not to scratch the top of the guitar. Not that that would anybody would notice. What a wonderful piece of advice. Working great. And get another full turn on this one. Oh yeah. Alright, so we got uh, we got good machine heads. Let's go ahead and get the strings back on this. Come on, baby. And where's my winder? Probably dropped it on the floor. Hmm. Well, isn't that cool? There it is. All right, so here we go, winding up strings. That feels really nice. That worked perfectly. Great. Flat wound on an acoustic. Yeah. Kind of strange. Wouldn't be my first choice. No. Nah. I will, but I'm gonna finish this before right. okay. before I go. And I'm not leaving. I'll be here today. Okay. So That's if you need good. to go take care of some stuff, Stu. I'm good, man. I just wanted to make sure you were covered. Yeah, I'll be all right. I was just trying to learn how to program RR so that when Chris is gone, I can. Oh yeah. That's what those this YouTube and videos watching. Of course, the this phone's display is so ruptured that. <sighs> hard to watch. I could probably do it on the front computer, but I just hate standing up there like a <laughs> goofball, you know? Mm -hmm. Feeling like, goofy? Like Junior or something. Alright. This oh, is...
go getting the strings on her. done with this bad boy almost almost done with this one all we've got to do at this point is uh, stretch the strings and uh, see what she sounds like Ooh, let's tune them up stretching these I did order two sets of strings so uh, if I happen to break if I happen to break one uh, on this I do have extras uh, if you're gonna try something new uh, like on one of your own guitars Like, uh, you know, if you're going to waste your money on elixir strings or something like that. Um, make sure to buy two sets of them so that you've wasted twice as much money on a set of elixir strings. But, um, always get two because when you don't is when... When the most unexpected will happen. Again, I'm being really gentle pulling on these. I'm usually a lot more aggressive. fun <laughs> and there it is so you know what I'm um, just like off the cuff um, my initial thought is that the strings don't sound um, remarkably different than a normal set of acoustic guitar strings um, paying for a full setup is really kind of tragic. The string action is at 964s on this. I take that back. It's 764s. My eye fooled me. So it's almost twice almost twice what it should be. So let's check the neck relief real quick. And then we'll get to playing this thing. See if the I'm hoping that the neck relief is really out of whack. My hope. Come here. Where's my 12? There we go. No, well, it's not bad, but it's it definitely needs a, a turn. Trust rod, and I believe it's a five mil. 
on this one. Might be a six on this. There is a. Uh, there is way too much underbow in this guitar. And again, I'm being very careful, well not again, I'm being very careful not to touch the strings with my hex key here. So we're gonna, ooh. Oh, I touched them. Wow, is this, is this truss rod broken? Check our relief again. That rod doesn't feel like it's doing anything. Mm I think the truss rod in this neck is broken. No, it just started to get, it started to snug up a little bit. Now I've got some tension on it. Okay, that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, now we're talking. I still have quite a bit of relief in this neck or underbow, as some guys like to call it. Hope, uh, hopefully my camera guy is doing all right. Give it one more little nudge. All right, let's check this now. Normally I don't check it when it's laying flat on its back, but uh, I can tell So It's interesting because this uh, Where the truss rod bend is really happening is out out in this area of the neck Which I actually kind of like and it still doesn't have enough um, relief at this point so we're gonna give it a little bit more again I'm being very careful not to touch the strings with my hex key now that's about right let's tune this thing back up Now we're down at 664. So just that adjustment to the truss rod brought the string action down uh, a whole 64th of an inch. <laughs> Really, really high. Hello. 
is kind of hard to play, really, uh, to me. Really good. Couldn't tell you. vibrato at all. I mean it's it's there but and it's kind of the steps I go through when I'm worried I've done my job right. Um, I have ordered a uh, Cat5 cable to connect my computer to the router hardwired, but um, I'm going to go ahead and end the, uh, end the stream now, but uh, there you go, flat wound strings. They don't sound real weird, um, probably uh, uh, just a little bit flatter, and the bends uh, don't feel very good. Not my favorite, but I don't think the gentleman that plays his guitar is bending strings a lot. It looks like my internet connection has kind of bounced back. Yeah, thanks, my knees hurt. Thanks for being here, MKN, or MKH. Uh, Justin, welcome, and um, I'm gonna head up. Uh, Axioms, thanks for being here. Um, yeah. Cut my teeth playing acoustics, and thanks for the compliment. Uh, yeah, everybody have a good day. Peace, y'all. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. You're already subscribed. Hit the like button. <laughs>